Today we have three incredible infinite series revolving around the Riemann zeta function. And believe me when I say this, the solution development is beautiful. It is just gorgeous. And all three of these infinite series are actually connected to each other in a single solution development, all based on defining an auxiliary series as s being equal to the sum over the positive integers n of zeta n plus 1 times x to the n, where the absolute value of x is less than 1. So what's the grand plan here? How exactly do I go from this infinite series to deriving results for our three target series? Well, it all starts off with expanding the zeta function here, where zeta n plus 1 equals the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k to the n plus 1. So this implies that our sum s equals the double sum first over n and then over k, both being the sets of positive integers of 1 by k to the n plus 1 times x to the n. And we can write this as 1 by k to the n times 1 by k, and hence uh, combine these two terms over here as x to the n divided by k to the n. Next up, our master plan is to switch up the order of the summation operators. So we're now summing first over k and then over n, 1 by k times x to the n divided by k to the n. And notice that this 1 by k term is independent of the index variable n with respect to which we're performing the first sum. So we can just slip it out of the summation with respect to n operator and we now have the sum over k of 1 by k times the sum over n of x to the n divided by k to the n, which we can write of course as x by k to the n. And remember that I defined the absolute value of x to be less than 1. That means this infinite series over here that I've boxed in purple is actually just the geometric series, with the first term being x by k, and the, geom and the uh, common ratio of the geometric series is also x by k. So we have the sum over k of 1 by k, and wait, terribly sorry about that. Let me just write this better. Yeah, much better. The sum over k of 1 by k, times the first term is x by k divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is also x by k. So expanding using k, I can write this as the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k times x divided by k minus x, or once again more uh, in a more compact manner as x divided by k times k minus x. A nice partial fraction decomposition is now in order. So we can write this as the sum over k of, uh, let's see, I'm, I think you're gonna need a k minus x term, one by k minus x, minus x term here, minus a one by k term. Yeah, that seems about right. And this here is what our sum over n of zeta n plus one times x to the n evaluates to. Now, how exactly do I extract from this result the values our target series evaluate to. Well, uh, the first sum was the sum over n of zeta n plus 1 divided by 2 to the n. And we're, gonna, and we're gonna call this s sub 1. Notice that to go from this infinite series to s sub 1, all we have to do is replace x by 1 half. So this implies that s sub 1 equals the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k minus 1 half minus 1 by k. And it'll be nice to switch up the order of the terms here and write this as the uh, negative of the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 1 uh, negative 1 half. Now what exactly was the point of doing all that? Well, I'm about to invoke one of my favorite tools here. That's the series expansion for the digamma function, where digamma z plus 1 equals negative euler mascheroni constant plus the sum over k of 1 by k minus uh, 1 by k plus z. Okay, cool. And in this case, our z value is negative 1 half. 
Okay, that's pretty nice. So that means on the left hand side you have di gamma one half being equal to negative order mascheroni constant plus our target series here over k. And if you just shift this to the left and this one to the right, this implies that the sum, uh, the negative of the sum over k of one by k minus one by k plus negative one half equals negative Euler mascheroni constant minus di gamma one half. So this is exactly what our series S sub one evaluates to. It evaluates to negative Euler mascheroni constant minus the di gamma function evaluated at one half. Now the di gamma function is defined as the derivative of the gamma function divided by the gamma function itself. And in a previous video, I derived the value of the derivative of the, di of the gamma function at one half. It evaluated out to, um, it was a negative Euler mascheroni constant minus log four. And the reciprocal of gamma one half is the reciprocal of the square root of pi. And no, no, wait, wait, wait. This term was being multiplied by the square root of pi as well. So you have some nice cancellation over here and you have negative Euler mascheroni constant plus Euler mascheroni constant plus log four. And once again, the two little gammas cancel out quite nicely. And this implies that the sum over the positive integers n of zeta n plus one divided by two to the n equals log four. The next infinite series that I'm going to call S sub 2 was the sum over n of zeta n plus 1, uh, negative 1 to the n times zeta n plus 1, that is, divided by 2 to the n. And notice that all you have to do here is replace x by negative 1 half. So this implies that S sub 2 equals uh, plugging in this value of x on the right hand side, this equals the negative of the sum over k of one by k minus one by k plus one half. And once again, remembering the uh, di gamma stuff that we did uh, back in the, back for the evaluation of the first series. This means that on the left hand side, you have negative Euler mascheroni constant minus that di gamma function, which in this case is evaluated at one plus one half, which of course is three by two. Now, how exactly do you evaluate di gamma three by two? Well, there's this wonderful uh, sort of recurrence. Yeah, it's a corresponding recurrence formula for the di gamma function where di gamma z plus one equals di gamma z plus one by z. So if you want di gamma three by two, then all you need is z to be equal to one half. So on the right hand side, we have di gamma one half plus the reciprocal of one half, which is of course two. So di gamma one half, the di gamma function evaluated at one by two, we just evaluated it. The square root pi's canceled out quite nicely in the numerator and denominator. So we were left with negative Euler mascheroni constant, negative log four plus two. And recall that S sub two was just the negative of the Euler mascheroni constant minus all of this stuff. So you have a plus little gamma plus log four minus two. So all, all of this implies that the sum over the positive integers n of negative one to the n times zeta n plus one divided by two to the n equals log four minus two. Another neat result indeed. Now for the best infinite series of the lot and I'm gonna define that, I'm gonna name that as sub three and it was the sum over the positive integers n of n times zeta n plus one divided by two to the n. So before we plug in x, uh, the value of x suitable, uh, we notice that we have this extra factor of n, which we can get by uh, differentiation with respect to x. So remember that we called this infinite series s, and performing the differentiation with respect to x yields s prime being the sum over n of zeta n plus one times n 
times x to the n minus 1. And again, differentiating the right side with respect to x gives us... Mm, did I perform the switch up? No, I haven't yet, so there's no extra negative sign. Yeah, everything's in order. So we have the sum over k of uh, negative 1 divided by k minus x squared. And because of the chain rule, you have this extra negative 1 up top. So that cancels out quite nicely. And you're left with 1 by k minus x squared, which I need to write much more clearly, uh, much better. So that's what you have on the right hand side. And now you have this x to the n minus 1, right? So what if I multiply both sides by x? So because x is independent of the index variable n, you can slip it inside the sum. Okay, cool. And that gives us, very carefully erasing this, that gives us x to the n inside. And over here you have that factor of x once again. And here, if you want your target series, again, you're going to have to plug in x being equal to 1 half. So this gives us s sub 3 being equal to the sum over n of n times zeta n plus 1 divided by 2 to the n being equal to 1 half of the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k minus 1 half squared, which we can simplify quite nicely. We can write this out as 2k minus 1 divided by 2 squared, and expanding by 4 in the numerator and denominator gives us uh, 4 by 2, which is, of course, 2. So we have 2 times the sum over k of 1 by 2k minus 1 squared, which is the sum of the reciprocals, uh, the sum of the uh, reciprocals of the squared odd integers, which we've evaluated numerous times on the channel, and we know that it evaluates out to pi squared by 8. So all of this implies that this beautiful sum here, the sum over the positive integers n of n times zeta n plus 1 divided by 2 to the n equals pi squared by 4. Again, a beautiful result, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.